So if there's anything our students always want to talk about, it's marriage yeah. uh, and how, how they should be thinking about marriage. Uh, so here's a big, broad question that maybe uh, Jane Austen, the unmarried woman, can help us answer, uh, which is, uh, when you think about marriage, uh, should you be practical or idealistic? Oh, I think Austen's saying you should be idealistic, mm. um, at least if, you, if you're taking Elizabeth as her, her view of what marriage should be. Yeah. So I think uh, Elizabeth, in many ways, she, she strives for a marriage that mm -hmm. she doesn't see in her world. It's not modeled anywhere. So she looks at her parents, um, Mr. and Mrs. Bennet. They married, they married for love initially, mm -hmm. um, but that soon faded and they had a, they had a, a terrible marriage. He, Mr. Bennet can't respect Mrs. Bennet. Um, she's ridiculous to him and he mocks her openly in front of their children. Uh, but she longs for something different that she doesn't want a marriage that's just built on love. She also wants to be able to uh, respect her husband, to have someone that uh, is a companion and a friend. Mm -hmm. And that's what she finds in Mr. Darcy. Mm -hmm. So that's a little bit different than plain old idealism, or I guess maybe idealism and and something else. I'm thinking of Lydia, right, who, mm -hmm. who sort of idealizes this man and catches him and finds him. And, and so that you could imagine that as being someone thinking about marriage idealistically. But there's something much more grounded to Elizabeth's idealism than that, right? Yeah, I think in many ways. Uh, so, uh, so when you look at Elizabeth, uh, I often think of uh, one of our other authors that we read in Tory, Mary Wollstonecraft. We mm -hmm. read a work by her called The Vindication of the Rights of Women. Mm -hmm. And she's in that text. It's a, it's a proto-feminist text. She's arguing for equal rights for women. Mm -hmm. uh, and she sketches uh, this picture of a woman who's intelligent mm -hmm. um, and and really looks is looking for something more mm -hmm. in marriage than um, getting catching catching someone who's going to provide right. for her financially, yeah. but uh, or even uh, catching someone who looks good in regimentals. Yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> those regimentals. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and and you you find a, a, a in many ways Elizabeth is mm -hmm. Wollstonecraft's ideal woman, and she has the ideal marriage mm -hmm. um, by Wollstonecraft Wollstonecraft standards. Uh, she has a friend as a spouse mm -hmm. and someone that she can respect and um, appreciate. Okay, what's the other side? Well, I mean, it depends what you mean by ideal. And I mean, part of one way to think of ideal is just what's best. And like, of course, everybody wants what's best. Right. But, uh, but, but we also think of idealism in marriage as is it just for love, mm -hmm. or is there are there practical considerations as well? And I think one of the part of the genius of uh, of Austin is the way that she marries together marries together <laughs> the, uh, the the practical and the uh, and, and, and the passion. And I, mm. As an Old Testament scholar, I'm thinking like you can read Proverbs mm. and find out a lot of practical wisdom about uh, what to look for in a spouse and what's going to make a marriage work. Mm -hmm. uh, but you're missing another part that you might need to read Song of Solomon uh, to, uh, to, mm. to counter. And, and, and they're both in, in Austin. It, even the title of her other work, Sense and Sensibility. Right. You know, sensibility in that area is what flutters the heart. Right. And yet it, there's some... Uh, matters of sense that have to be, uh, of, I mean, we might just say good old plain common sense that have to be addressed as well. Right, and it's actually sense in that novel who's the, the protagonist, like the character that we most uh, mm -hmm. sort of are cheering for is the one who's not so sentimental. And even though they both sort of move closer to a mean over the course mm -hmm. of the text, mm -hmm. that that's, that's actually the ideal in some ways for Austin is the sensible woman. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, but I think when I think of the most sensible woman in Pride and Prejudice, it's Charlotte. Um, right. And she marries Mr. Collins. He's ridiculous. <laughs> but he's this, uh, he's uh, simultaneously arrogant and servile. Um, so if that's if Charlotte's the most uh, pragmatic, practical mm -hmm. person, how how is that a good marriage? Well, I think that I, I, with Charlotte, I, I might come to her defense in a little mm -hmm. bit. I wanted to say that uh, actually. Um, she she takes uh, a pragmatic view as what she's mo what she is able to get at, at her age and at her station in life, and so in in the real world we have to actually make decisions about that. But I think you're right that the uh, not only in the eyes of Elizabeth, but it seems like in the eyes of Austin, 
uh, Charlotte's marriage is far from the ideal, mm -hmm. and that she that she she's not as maybe bad as the Bennets, but uh, she can't. But you know, miss, like uh, Mr. Bennett is uh, often off in his study because he can't respect his wife. And this, when uh, Elizabeth goes to visit Charlotte, she finds her off in her own little room, mm -hmm. uh, and that just is uh, a sad picture of a marriage. Right. Okay. So let me throw a wrench in the works. I don't think Elizabeth the ideal in Pride and Prejudice. I think Elizabeth is the character Austen most identifies with. I think the ideal is Jane. I think Jane and Bingley are the marriage that even Elizabeth thinks is the best marriage of the of the group. Um, and and because they're the most virtuous two characters, uh, they're able to have a better marriage even than Elizabeth yeah. and Darcy because they're just more virtuous people than Elizabeth and Darcy are. I, and, she, and Elizabeth does acknowledge that when she says, until I have your virtue, I can't have your happiness. Yeah. Um, but there's a sense in which uh, uh, Jane's virtue is naive and she has to become, mm -hmm. uh, she has to learn to be less naive about, about, about men in particular. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but I think that there is a lot of to admire about the, the marriage between Jane and, and Mr. Bingley. So the ideal marriage could be the virtuous marriage there, that there's something about actually just being good people. I'm, I, I like that as a, as a thesis because it meshes with Aristotle and other figures who mm -hmm. are gonna say like, no, yeah. if, you want, if you want a great friendship, you just have to be good people. That's, yeah. the, that's the thing that you strive towards and any marriage between two good people is going to be ideal in that sense because, because both of them can create happiness for themselves and each other. I don't know if this, it's fair to use uh, Elizabeth's own uh, description, but she actually says in a letter right at the end of the book that she's happier uh, than uh, Jane and Bingley. Oh, and she says it, uh, she says, while Jane smiles, uh, I laugh. Mm -hmm. And so there's a sense what you get with Jane and uh, Bingley, that they are uh, happy, but in a kind of bland, placid way. Mm -hmm. Whereas with Elizabeth and Darcy, there's, there's, uh, there's the heights and depths. Uh, and and that, uh, th that somehow, at least in Elizabeth's eyes, uh, the, uh, the, the, the heights and the, the, the laughter of marriage uh, makes uh, the harder uh, kind of confrontational relationship that they have worth it. Mm -hmm. And she does come to terms with, uh, Elizabeth comes to terms with Charlotte, uh, Charlotte's marriage and with, with Mr. Um, Mr. Collins mm -hmm. uh, and acknowledges like, hey, she, she seems uh, content. Uh, may, she's not smiling or, or, or laughing, mm -hmm. but she's content and this is the best that she could have hoped for given her circumstances. Mm -hmm. So that's a, a deep vein of practicality, mm -hmm. even even alongside the the real idealism. Yeah. So maybe mm -hmm. it's okay to settle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But she's not going to. But she's. But Elizabeth is not going to give up uh, anyway. And maybe that points to something like that on the human level. Mm -hmm. Uh, we do have to just settle for what what sometimes we can get, but on the on the larger level, uh, that we should hope that uh, our relationships uh, and primarily our relationship with God is one in which we're uh, which we're not just, we don't just settle, mm -hmm. but we're uh, we get the ideal of being in a relationship where we're loved. The Tory Honors Institute at Biola University, biblically centered, great books liberal education. More at biola.edu slash Tori.